How's it going, crew? Crew? I don't know. I might just call you guys the crew because, like, can't really call you as much else. People? People watching? Um, just got a call from Auto One saying my parts for the patrol are in. It's only just one part, of course. There's only one part that's really broken. There's a few things we'll need to check on the weekend, but apart from that... Alright, well this is going to be my first time actually publicly vlogging, uh, walking around with a camera in a place where there's not already shitloads of people. Um, that's going to be good, very interesting, but uh, yeah, let's go. Hey! There he is! Oh, he's got the camera I've got the well. camera. I'm... Wow, what's going on, mate? Not much. Am I on camera here? Should yeah, I'm... you can camera. How do I have no... Oh, uh, what up? This is, <laughs> this is Matt. He's the, the boss fellow at Auto One. Brown's Plains. You're a little bit rough there. I know, the I'm, I know camera, I'm a bit rough. I'm rookie ads. This is my first time... Um, first time publicly vlogging. Apart no. from the car meet, but there's like... Is, is this, say, a live feed? No, unfortunately. Oh, I don't think this yeah, GoPro does rough. that. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're here to pick up some parts for the patrol. Mm, so. mm. All right, so this is what we're getting the patrol ready for. Uh, we've got Al here from Auto One. He's going to run through everything with it. G'day, guys. Um, yeah, Al here from Auto One Brands Plain. So as uh, um, March the 14th, we're doing a four-drive show and shine and four-drive expo. So we're going to have Mean Mother, MSA, Core Lighting, Penrite, and just to name a few, and GME on the night. We're going to have some big discount specials, never to be seen prices. We've got a big flex ramp out here as well. So for the big boys that have got big cars, come on down and flex them up on the flex ramp. Show and shine, trophies for all make and model category. Uh, DJ, live music, and um, food store. So make sure you come on down March the 14th, guys, from 5 pm onwards. Sweet. You're much better at talking on camera than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a go. I'll try my best. Sweet. How's it going, crew? We're here with we're here with Jaden. We had you to wash it. It would hurt me to wash it. It's a four bit. It's meant to be dirty. I actually um, today I had to sit down, and had to listen to some dude tell me about how great TDs are. Like, yeah, great. If I'd want an outdated forklift motor, I'd put an old three liter in it. On yeah, they're good. Anyway, <laughs> this is what we got from Auto One. Fantastic. So right there is what we're chasing. So we're going to replace that and get it going. Yeah, the boys. Okay, so we're gonna need, I'm assuming we'll need a 12, a 10, and possibly a 13. They got A. Got it, this is it. This is a stuffed clutch master cylinder. Hopefully, it doesn't fix it, we'll just throw the whole car out. <laughs> but we've got our new one from Auto One, yeah. which is somewhere, Jaden, where is it? Boom, so there it is right there. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a common fault it is, but yeah, it's, uh, in this case it's a big fault, hopefully. So I've also heard of, on the off chance, they can actually get an airlock in behind here from the actual seal not holding properly. That could be part of the problem, so we'll replace it regardless. But yeah, I've heard of, if you don't bleed them correctly, they can get an airlock, but it was bled correctly because I spent hours doing it. So we'll yeet this in the bin and uh, fit this one, bleed it up, and we'll show you how to bleed all that too. Do you the old brake fluid? No. Alright, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try this out. Okay, so we've fitted up our new clutch master cylinder, brake fluid. We got Jaden under here, ready to bleed. of your gearbox is where your slave cylinder is. So there's a little nipple on the side and you need to crack that and we've got our little air bleeding tool here which makes life a lot easier because without that it's a pain in the ass to get all the air out. I've spent hours trying to um, get air out of these systems because the way that the uh, clutch lines run is a bit weird but I'll show you that in a sec. Anyway, uh, are you ready to rumble? Yeah. So, pull that, and it's 
sucks all of the uh, the old fluid out and it'll help bleed it. So I'll go and leave this on autopilot. Then I'll go keep topping up this fluid reservoir so it doesn't go empty. Are we having a win down there, Chief? I lost the spanner. You lost my spanner. <laughs> All right, let's check if the clutch is good. Jaden, I'm checking the clutch. Oh, daddy. Oh, daddy, that feels fantastic. It is much quicker. I remember having to do this once and it took literally three hours to bleed this. I'll actually show you why on your patrols. Get your groot on, such a good shirt. Okay, so on your, on your clutch, still on um, master cylinder, your line goes from the cylinder up higher than the cylinder over the top of the motor and then down on the other side. So what happens is you get a huge airlock up in here because it's higher than your cylinder. The smarter thing for Nissan would have been to do would be to run that line straight down and then across the transmission gearbox. But instead, they decided to run it over the top of the motor. So if you ever do one of these or even do a slave cylinder, get yourself one of those vacuum bleeders. It'll make your job so much easier. <sighs> So much easier. Let's chuck a battery in it and see if she fires up and we'll take it for a take him for a barp. Alright, let's see if the rig starts after months of sitting. Oh would you look at that? Not to mention, we've actually got a three inch exhaust system on this rig too. So she's a, a wee bit rowdy. Take her for a drive soon. We've got to fix this AC bearing. It's real common for the AC bearing on these things to shit themselves because of, they sit so low. They get full of mud, so not good. Man's driving his big rig. Yeah, I have missed driving this thing, but bloody hell, I don't really, it's, it's different. Going from a, a sports car where it's instant, everything's really nice and tight, and you jump into a four-wheel drive and it's Easy. sloppy as a... Got to turn four years before the turn. Yeah, and the gearbox is just... How's it go? <laughs> this thing runs more boost than the FTX. <laughs> But we'll uh, definitely have to check wheel bearings when we get back. We'll check the brakes over as well. But yeah, I definitely get more looks driving this than I do driving the uh, FGX around. Mainly Grand because the FGX is stock and this thing looks like a grandpa spec. A monster truck. This was a lot of the P plate, P plate years. Yeah, this was my P plate car. I've only owned four cars my entire life. I owned a uh, blue Subaru. Uh, RX, which I wish I kept because it would have been a mid rally car uh, as a bush basher. Uh, I owned a Suzuki Sierra, which was what got me into four wheel driving. It was a bucket. So I've got some photos if I put them up right now. Boom.
<laughs> it's legal. Yeah. We'll go with that. The, the legal height uh, springs work really well. There's not overly amount of body roll. I do have all the sway bars and all the other stuff in. I forgot to mention it has adjustable pan hard rods. Literally everything under this car is adjustable with brand new butchers and all the other stuff. Um, yeah, I need to get more diesel in it before we go to the uh, full driving show. Are you going to that, Jaden? Yeah, probably. See if I can make it. You better make it. <laughs> go down here. I thought you were going to hook it left hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We got this jack from Auto One, didn't we, Jaden? Everything's from Auto One. Everything we get from Auto One. All right, let's see. Support your local businesses. Support your local businesses. You hold this. Okay. <laughs> right. So we're going to check our wheel bearings because there was a slight wobble, and normally with the patrol, it'll be your wheel bearings. So to check wheel bearings, grab the top and bottom of the wheel. Give it a bit of shake. See there's movement there. That's not good. Oh, dude. There's a fair bit, eh? <laughs> Now you can also check your steering linkages and all the other stuff if you bring your camera around here, Jaden. So your steering linkages, give it a bit of a wiggle, and you see if any steering is moving around. You'll also be able to check if your kingpins... Specifically king pins, your tie rods. Yeah. Tie rod ends. You can also check if your kingpins and all that are stuffed by doing that wiggle test, and you'll see that they're not moving while I'm wiggling the wheel, but the wheel bearing is. Only applies to vehicles with kingpins. Most modern four-wheel drives are double wishbone, high FS in the front. Only this one is. Boggers. This yeah. patrol is a live axle. All patrols are live axles. Except, except the new, new ones. ones. Except the new ones. So, yeah, we'll uh, whack this wheel off if I can even find the locking key. I don't know where that's gone oh, anymore. God. Uh, and, yeah, if not, we can just do it on the car because it's not that hard to just take that off. So, we'll go to that. <laughs> Pro safety tip if you have your car jacked up and you haven't got box or anything to put under it, chuck your spare wheel that you just took off under it. That way, if it does fall off, It'll land on your tyre. You'd rather stuff a tyre and a rim than an axle or a car land on you because, gee, look at that, look at that oh, yeah. spring. Um, Once your legs are gone, you can't replace them. Yeah, so chuck a wheel under it and she'll be right. That's nothing to worry about. That's just because it's jacked up. She'll be right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go check the, the bearings. We'll pull it all apart. I'll show you how to do that just now. Yeah. 
what you will fight against And if you want my opinion Hi guys, so my hubs are manual locking hubs. These are better, well I find that they're better than the auto lockers. With the auto lockers they will actually unlock themselves when you go into reverse. So when you're stuck in a bog hole and you're trying to like forward reverse yourself out, you'll actually blow your automatic hubs to bits. all models or just? The DX's come factory with auto hubs, uh, with manual locking hubs and all the other models come with auto lockers. But a lot of people upgrade theirs to the manual lockers yeah. because then you can just get out and lock it and you haven't got the problem of blowing your hub to bits. Yeah, right. Or you can stuff axles and all sorts of stuff because it's spinning freely then it snaps and locks in. Yeah. Uh, it normally locks after one or two spins of the wheel. That's what I've been told. So anyway, you take this off. There's a little snap ring on the stub here. You take that off. Then you get yourself some... <laughs> some standard Nissan multi-grips. Chuck that out. So that's what actually locks into your hub, which then locks the wheel to the axle. And if you don't put all this back together correctly, you don't have every, when you rebuild it, if you haven't got everything back in the right spot, this groove actually won't be sticking out enough for you to get that snap ring in. If that's the case, you have to pull everything out again and make sure everything is pushed back in nice and tight. Been there, done that a few times. Get that out, that's just a, or whatever you want to call it. This is a lot of work. But Jerry, you just take the cap off and there's just one big lock ring. Really should have bought it for Jerry. Should have bought, I should have bought a patch. Honestly. It's much easier. Uh, yeah, we got two. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there should be another one. Should be another one. There it is. There's I was about few, to say, I remember a few putting... dodgy days back in yeah, the day. Yeah, too many, a bit too much sauce in between doing videos. <laughs> okay, so then we got that. Let me get out another screwdriver out, just a way up along for the screwdriver. Or just use your circuit pliers. For the wrong use. It's a good time. Get in there. Pull that out. Now that's just a, a lock ring. Obviously, your screws go through the hole and lock into your adjustment nut that's in there. So if you haven't, if you have a patrol and you haven't gone and got one of these, they must have. Thirty bucks from Auto One, I believe. So they were. Mm. They you can get them at any shop. So you chuck that into the big holes that are here, and then you get your half-inch ratchet. The bar. The bar. Get the bar. Chuck it on there, and well, you're not actually meant to. When you do wear bearings, you're not meant to actually have them so the wheel can't move, because that's how you flog out everything. So that's that's, that's too tight, to right? Rotate. Yeah, the point of a bearing is to rotate, not to not not rotate. <laughs> not 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 rotate. So you get that nipped up, and then you go back. The aftermath of over tightening a bearing would be seizing, seizing bad things, melting, it's, fire. Yeah, it's one hub. Well, yeah, bad things happen. <laughs> So you take off the pressure and then you just bring it in again. That's just how I do it. Oofed. It's actually a lot easier to check your uh, bearing drag. What I find with the wheel on, because you can get a bit of better of a feel for it. But because I've got the wheel under here and I'm working on a sort of a slope, I don't really want to be taking wheels out to do that. So we'll just check it by hand. This is really hot because we just went for a drive. Feels like... All right, ish. Been so long since I've done this. All right, so how hubs work, well, you're locking hubs, is when they're free, this bit in here, there's a hard teeth, they aren't touching this. And when you engage them, it pushes forward, and these teeth go into these teeth, which connects this bit to this bit. And then deep into this bit, I'm gonna get my fingers all dirty. In this bit, there's a spline. There should be a spline. I hope there's a spline. There's something in here that touches somewhere and does something magical. I can't feel it. Education. Alrighty, some bad news. We've uh, just pulled apart the driver's side and the bearings cooked. There was a lot of play when we checked the play on this one. There's a lot. So the bearings completely cactus. Everything's pretty, it's gotten hot. It looks like there's gotten some water in from this back seal that could have failed. 
So I'm going to have to get a uh, seal kit, get it all put together before the, sh the show and shine, get that done. So that's going to be full on, full on weeks. So I'll have to talk to Al and get that sorted. But yeah, not, not the news we were really, really uh, hoping to see. But anyway, so we'll whack this back together, put it back on the front yard and um, go sort of get the other shit done, I guess. <laughs> ah. All right, so before I mentioned the bias valve, so under the back, actually the back axle here, for my lift kit, I had, it comes with a bracket, and the bracket goes off to this arm. Now normally, this bracket sits here on your diff. Basically, it runs up off a spring to this valve up here. So basically what happens is when your car's driving, this will allow the brakes to operate. And when you hit the brakes and the back of the car moves up because of obviously you're hitting the brakes, it'll move up and pull this in, which will apply less braking force to the rear end so that they don't spin. I think from memory, that's what I was, was told. Don't quote me on that, but that's how it works. If you're doing a bigger lift kit, like a three inch, six inch, four inch, any of those bigger sizes, you need to get a bracket, otherwise your brakes won't work because it'll think that the back of the car is lifting up in the air, so it'll cut brakes to the back of the car. Um, I can't remember the correct way to adjust all this. It came with the book, um, so the books tell you how to do it all. I actually got this from Patrol Apart down in... Actually, I got the instructions on how to um, adjust this and the, at the Patrol Apart shop in Bingley, but I got this when I got everything else from Auto One. Um, but yeah. Back to the padge. Since we're in the mood for full drive fixing, we're actually going to chuck a uh, 300 kilo constant springs into the father-in-law's. Into the I need to edit that bit. <laughs> yeah, into into the father-in-law's Pajero. So it should be a fairly easy swap out. Two inch lift springs in it now, but they're. Uh, comfort 80 kilo, so it doesn't take the weight. He's already got 60 kilos of drawers in the back. Yeah, uh, so as you can assume, it sags. He got he put the springs in before he had the drawers in, and uh, now he's chucked the drawers in, and now it's starting to sag a bit. So we've got some big boy springs here. We're going to throw in. We'll do a quick bit on that too, and go from there. Alright. Um, now, when you're pulling out springs in a car, whether it's uh, four wheel drive or even normal cars, and it has a solid axle. As so, to get the springs out, you need to undo your shockies. So, the idea is you undo your shocky so that when you lift up the car or drop the axle down, is that your shocky will actually pull through. If you don't, your shocky will bottom out because normally, well, it should be done, your shocky should be shorter than your spring, otherwise, your spring will fall out and you flex. So, to change your springs, undo your shocky, and then lift it up. Your spring will just fall out. When we did the patrol, it was a bit different because they've got flexi coils in it. So well, I had to get a forklift and lift it up like, yeah, stupid high. Like I had to have the thing up here. It was it was stupid to get those in because they're so big. Um, but yeah, so that's how we're going to do it on this one. And uh, we'll go from there, eh? Tell Jaden this looks unsafe. Okay. <laughs> just like, we're just going to send it. Get it out, Jaden. Get it out. Pan hard rods are annoying. Might just take the wheels off, eh? Just cut the pan hard rod. We don't need that where we're going. Yeah, no, we don't need it. Don't need it. Ow! You tell Justine that. <laughs> Alrighty, so we had to use spring compressors to get the spring in because we can't lift it high enough because of the, the brake line. Jaden's on it. I'm sure as you'll see through the time lapse, I don't do much. <laughs> ah, it's good. It's good. We've got a very safe setup here at AJ Larkin front yard. <laughs> it's not in the garage, that's in the front yard, but Jaden's got it sorted. Alright, I'm sure you're wondering why we haven't taken the wheels off. We just think, with the angle it's sitting at, and we would use the flat bit, but it's been raining so much that the ground's going to be all squishy. And of course, with our jacking setup, we didn't want to have an axle with no wheel on it, because if something did go wrong and it dropped down and someone's under it, I'd rather, you know, it'll drop down hit the wheel instead of dropping down, hitting the ground and someone potentially being under the axle. So before we get the internet whinges saying, it'd be easier if you took the wheel off. Yeah, OH&S comes in. Yeah, OH&S comes in and they see it is chocked. We do have chocks at the front here, so. It is all good. We just thought safety wise, keep the wheel on. We've got one side done. Oh, I just got a spring compressor the other side. 
Give us a thumbs up. Come on, Jaden. Ah, oh, good work. <laughs> All done. We've got to start doing this finishing at night time. We do this a lot. Anyway. Get our safety chocks out. You want to take it for a drive? Yeah, let's chop these other springs in the back. The dead ones. So, bit of a downer that uh, the, the rig's not the, the rig's not finished, but we'll get there. I'll talk to my good friend Al. So uh, I'm shirtless now. It's a bit warm. Same. Show the tats. Now, um, don't record me recording. <laughs> so just finished doing the Pajero. Bad news on the patrol. We've gone through all that. Cook up a bit of a mean feed for the crew since they came around and helped, even though Jaden paid for half of the sausages. Yeah, seven dollars. Seven dollars. Oh, are they going to be good sausages? Yeah. Connor isn't here today. He went racing. Um, apparently, he's had some more troubles with that car again. So he'll be around a bit later. And uh, hopefully, they can get that sorted. Hopefully, they can just get him a proper car. Apparently. We will get him a car when we become famous. When I've got <laughs> that, when I got that million subs, we'll get him a race car. And it's going to do later. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for watching this long video. Um, yeah, I look forward to the rebuild. Like and subscribe and um, get 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 your get your groot on. See you later. <laughs>